Hey guys, welcome back to Mini Monet's Art for the Young. Today we are going to be creating a vintage holiday Mickey piece. And um, for this piece, you can do this either with paints, um, with acrylic paint, with watercolor paint. You can even do this um, with colored pencils or markers, or crayons, or just a sketch with no color. So um, I'll show you a few items that I have for this piece myself. So I have either a an artist's canvas or I have a nice piece of watercolor cardstock paper. Um, that's what I'll be doing for today's piece. I will be using acrylic paint. So the colors that I'm using for my acrylic is I start off when I have this beautiful color called vanilla and you can see it's just a little bit more antique than the white. It's not super ivory, but it's just a little bit um, different than the white. So it's a little bit more ivory. Then I have just any type of red color that you prefer, white, black, and then just some sort of kind of holly green color. You can just change up these colors if you like. As you can see, I did not fill in the shoes yellow. Um, a lot of people ask, hey, where's the yellow? But we're actually just keeping it white because we wanna keep it vintage and simple and just very classy. I also have uh, an array of brush choices to choose from. I also have a nice sharpened pencil with erasers and I also have a Sharpie marker. You don't have to have a Sharpie, but if you like to use that after you trace with your pencil, you can totally go for that. I have my two daughters with me today. They are also creating the pieces and let's see, Heidi is going to be using watercolors as well as Hannah and Heidi has started, um, she's already started doing a little bit of her sketching and so has Hannah. All right, so we are going to get started. So uh, the first thing you can choose is whether you are going to do your piece portrait style, which is this way, or landscape. It does not matter, whatever you prefer. You can even add more to your scene. You could do like a, you know, an area of presents, or you could do a Christmas tree, or you could totally transform this and put, you know, a mouse on for Minnie Mouse, whatever you like. So I am going to do mine portrait style so you guys can see them side by side, and everything will be direct sketch. So I will teach you step by step as we go, and I will probably zoom in a little bit at times for you to see it as well. So the first thing that I like to start with is his little eye area. So I'm going to do this very soft, um, arch and that I'm just going to start you can see so here's my my page here I'm not going to start directly in the middle I'm going to go up just a little bit so that I have enough room for his body as well as his hat and all of that okay so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create that soft little arch and you can make this as big or as small as you like so I'm just going to go very gentle it's not super huge I keep it nice and light just so that I can erase when I need to. Now his eyes, notice they're very much oval, okay? So they're not huge, big, huge arches. They're very much oval. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some oval arches for my eyes. And remember always to just keep this light. That way you can go over it if you need to to erase. So there's one and do a second one. And never stress or worry if your shapes are not identical or equal. I don't like to stress about that. You have to give yourself a little bit of grace for some wiggle room for things to not be identical. Now we are going to create some sideways V's. I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit so you guys can really see what I'm doing here. So a little sideways V right here, one, two and then I take my pencil eraser and I erase just that little line area right in here okay there you go you got the eyes now we're going to go ahead and go into our nose and he's also an oval and you can make this as large or as small as you like I'm going to go right underneath it and the trick for this piece is really to keep him the, the pieces, the objects, and the features fairly close. Okay, so just create yourself a little oval. Try not to bring it down too far. Keep it up close to that line that we first made. And at this point, you can always say, okay, maybe I wanna make this a little bit shorter, or maybe I want a little bit longer. Just do a little bit of adjusting. Now, I'm not going to fill this in because we're going to fill that in with paint. The next step you're going to do is you are going to create the mouth shape. 
So I'm just going to create the first top part of the mouth. And again, I'm keeping it fairly close to his nose. Okay, so all these features are fairly close. They're not super far away. All right, so I'm gonna bring this up and you can see I'm bringing the smile all the way up almost to where that eye line is. So I'm just gonna bring this down and I'm gonna bring this up. It's almost like a little stretched out V shape. Okay, so you're gonna bring out that little line and that's just the top portion of his mouth here. And then you're going to add a little smile line. So one up there and one on this side, that's gonna give him some expression. Now we wanna create the portion of his mouth underneath that is the open part. So I try to drag this out, really drag this out down towards the center of the mouth and give him some room so that it looks like he's laughing or singing or smiling. And now we do the tongue inside. So you're going to do one, two bumps, okay? So right at the bottom, you're gonna go one, two. All right, so this whole area inside the mouth will be black and this part will be his red tongue. Now we are going to shape, frame his little face right here, okay? So we're gonna come up here and again, you can make this as close to his eyes or as far as you like. I'm gonna go about here, I'm just gonna put a little tiny dot right there and then I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna shape, I'm gonna go a nice big arch and I'm gonna shape this around. Like so, and as you can see, I do a lot of erasing, you guys too. It's always good to do some soft little small motions with your hands. So there's one, and then I'm gonna bring this over here and again, I'm shaping his face. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right there. Notice that I did not go all the way down. So there's one, go to the other side, shape those eyes. One on this side. I'm stopping somewhat the same spot and I'm gonna shape his little mouth again. You're just framing his face and you're coming down here. Now if you need to adjust again, just adjust the shape of his mouth, do some little erasing if you need to. Okay, now you wanna make sure that you add his little chin right underneath his mouth, okay? So you're just gonna do a soft little shape of a chin right here. And again, you can just bring this in close. Okay. So we've got this guy, you can attach those if you like. All right, so now we've got the basics of Mickey's face. All right, now if you are doing a Minnie Mouse, one of the things that you could add is you could add some little eyelashes on the corner. So you could do a couple lashes here, a couple lashes here, whatever you like. So if that's what's something you wanna do, feel free to add that. All right, so now we're gonna go back up to the top of his head here and we wanna go ahead and create this line right here. It's just a line that's gonna go right across and you can see it really touches the tops of these little arches. So I'm just gonna do a nice soft, arched line, almost like what we did for our eyes. And I'm just gonna go across like so. All right, this is gonna be the top where his little hat is. Now we want to create this Santa fur on his hat. So I'm going to, before I continue on with the, the fur, I'm going to add these little features right here, the sides of his head. So we're gonna go ahead and round this off because we want that to be black in just a moment. That'll be a nice little black area, part of his little head. Now we can come over here and we can do this little fluffy Santa trim to his hat. Remember, don't make this all perfect. You want it kind of be zigzaggy and fluffy like it would be a, a fun Santa hat. You can see it just goes all the way around. Awesome, Heidi's working on hers and so is Hannah. They look amazing. Let's show them your sketches. These girls have done this piece with me before, so I'm gonna show you guys. So this is Heidi's. Heidi is seven years old. This is fantastic. Can't wait to see what it looks like with color. Hannah is gonna show us hers as well. Hannah is 12. Pretty awesome. These look incredible. All right, okay, continuing on. So next up after our little Santa fur trim, we're gonna go ahead and go into the actual red part of the hat. So you could go either direction. If you wanna to go to the right, you can. If you wanna to go to the left, you can. If you wanna go straight up, you can. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to reach to the right. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna reach up and give him a little bit of a swooping motion. Okay, I'll go to the other side and I'm just gonna come into a nice little point 
And then let's go ahead and create a little Santa pom-pom on the top here. Just keep it very imperfect if we can, please. All right, now, super important feature is he needs his ears. Now, sometimes people struggle and they're like, wait, where do I put the ears? Do I put them way up here? Like, how do I do that? Just imagine that they are attached to his head. So you're only going to see a portion of his ear. So if you need to, just put those circles already on. You could just pretend like they're there and just erase any marks. So if you're like, okay, no, 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 he needs bigger ears, you're gonna go in here and you're just going to round those out. I don't trace anything, I just eyeball it and then I say, okay, well, obviously the hat is covering this part, so I'm just gonna erase this area here. So I've got one ear sticking out there and then you're going to go to the other side, same thing. Just pretend like they're, that he cut two little slits for his, ears in his Santa hat. All right, there we are. Okay, so those look pretty good. I like the sizes. You can tell that he's got some cute little Mickey ears. You can always make them bigger or smaller if you like. I'm gonna zoom that back out a little bit. Okay, so now we've got some of those basic features. Now we are going to work into our scarf area. So we'll zoom in a little bit again so you guys can see. So we are going to reach a little bit further. I don't want you to go directly right here. So we, we want him to have a nice thick scarf to keep him warm. So we're gonna go one and we're gonna go to the other side, two, and then we're going to go all the way across, give him a nice big scarf like so. Now, before I start adding in the design, which by the way, you don't have to do stripes, you could do polka dots, you could do Christmas trees, you could do green scarf, it doesn't matter. We're going to go into this tail part of the scarf. So the first thing that I do is I create this line right here, and this is going to be the middle center line. So mine does not go directly straight, it kind of curves a little bit, almost like maybe it's in the wind. So it curves just a little bit over here. And then I'm gonna come back over here and this would be this line right here. So you notice it doesn't go all the way down, but pretty close. And I start narrow, so it means I start small and as I go, it's going to get a little bit bigger. So I start small and as I go out, it gets just a little bit bigger. Okay, and then I'm going to close this off. Okay, and then we're going to go to the other side. Notice this line right here is just a touch bit longer than this one. So we're gonna come back out, keep it small, and bring it nice and wide. And again, I'm going to close this off, and let's add a little bit of fringe to our scarf, like that. Now, keep in mind, you do not have to do your scarf just like this. You can change it to anything you like. If you have a different style, you're welcome to do that. So now we'll add a little bit of those features, some stripes, or if you're doing a different type of design, that's fine too. Um, I try not to have these directly lined up. I mean, if they do, it's not a big deal, but I just try to make it a little bit more realistic. So like so. And then don't forget the top part of the scarf, whatever design that you're doing. All right, so now we've got a scarf. Okay, so now we need to add his shirt. So you can see here's his the top part of his body. So we're gonna come right in here and we are going to bring a line down this way and then we're going to close it. So this area right here will be black. All right, now let's go into his shorts. Okay, so his shorts, and remember if you're doing a dress for Minnie, that's fine too, or if you're changing up his outfit, maybe he's wearing pajamas or something, you can do that. So I'm going to start by creating kind of that hip part of his body, and then I bring it down. So it's almost like a side smile when you're doing that. Then create the little shorts part. So I bring a little line out this way, bringing a line out this, back in. So it looks like he's got some cute, traditional Mickey Mouse shorts on. Then we have to add those buttons, just two little ovals, and mine, only that second one is just gonna be a portion of it. All right, so now we need to add, before we start to add anything else, we're going to add his little arms. So let's first go into his hand right here. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing here. 
adjust that just so that you can see. So I'm going to place this on the shorts part of his outfit. And I'm the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach. So I'm going to go one, two. All right, this is part of his glove, his white glove. And then I'm just gonna add a few little lines that make it look like that's where his little fingers would be. So that's one of them. Now I'm gonna go to the other side and do the same thing. Okay, so bump, bump, and a few more little lines. One, two, you could do three in there. They don't need to be perfect. They certainly don't need to be the same size. Now we're going to add an arch right on top of that. One, one, okay? So you can see in our sample, that's what it's going to look like. All right, now let's create some cute little mouse or little mice, mouse uh, arms. So we're going to do a bend. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so you guys can see what we did in the original. So we're just going to do a little bit of a bend in our arm right here. So we're gonna go from our scarf, we're gonna go this way and you're going to Bend it right into that one. Now do the same thing right on top. From here, and you're going to bend it right in. So it looks like he's got his arms on his hips. Do the same thing on the other side. One bent arm and the second one. Now remember, he's a mouse, so he's got small arms. They're pretty thin. They don't need to be huge and wide. Okay, so now we're going to pop into our feet. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to create the legs. So notice my legs are not, per, they're not parallel straight up and down. They're kind of out a little bit. So we're gonna go one, two, and then the same thing over here, one, two. And then at the bottom, I want you guys just to do a little wrap around. So it looks like his ankles are sitting inside of a shoe. Okay. Now remember when you do his shoes, it's super important and also for minis to do nice big character shoes. Okay. They have these big fabulous character shoes. So you want to create a nice big shoe. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to create the back of it and I'm going to bring a line down. And here's this step right here, one. Same thing over here, down and over here. Now we can create the big puffy front part of the shoe. So I'm gonna big character shoe here and I'm gonna bring it right back in. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of a heel to that shoe. If you want, you can add a little bit of a sole, just kind of subtly, it doesn't need to be super big. Same thing on the other side nice big character shoe and a lot of people get kind of caught up and oh my gosh they're not the same size what am i going to do don't stress about that it's okay if they're not they can be at different angles that's the heeled part of the shoe and you can bring a little bit of that bottom of the shoe poking out if you would like you don't have to okay and then add a couple little features like add a little looks like a little uh fold mark okay there you go all right so he is looking quite adorable all right, so we've got our sample, we've got our sketched out version. Okay, so now we're going to start creating our holly. So from here, I'm going to start with three of the small holly berries, as you can see here, just right in the center. And you can make these as small or as big as you like. Holly berries tend to be a little bit smaller, so I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit for us. So I'm just gonna put three in the corner and make sure I have enough room for my holly leaves. Okay, so I have three here. It doesn't matter if they're touching or not. And then I'm going to go into my actual greenery. So these have some points on the leaves and if you feel them in real life, they're kind of a nice little texture. They have some little points on them. And so we're gonna start from here and we're gonna go one. And you can see this is like a little arch or a little smile, right? So we're gonna do one, two, three. Okay, now you're going to go the opposite way. One, two, and that third one is not gonna come out here, it's going to go back in to your holly. Okay, so I'll do that again so you guys can see that. One, 
two, three. One, two, three. Okay, now we're gonna do this side. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, so now we have a little holly leaf in the corner. And from here, we are going to Sharpie marker. And if you feel like, oh gosh, you know what? I just don't really need to take the time to Sharpie. I feel really confident with my brushes. I'm just gonna go ahead and go into the paint. That's perfectly fine. So it's just as kind of dependent on how you feel. So um, I am not going to go into my black first. I tend to like to leave the black for last because I feel like it's a little bit messier. I'm going to pick a little bit smaller brush because my areas are small. So I'm going to go into the white first. So be careful not to mix that up with the uh, ivory or that vanilla color. And I'm just gonna start with the white and I wanna make sure that I keep it super thin. I'm gonna see about putting a little light on for us. There we go, all right. Keeping it super thin. Now normally, what I do with my classes, with my students, is I have them Sharpie every single thing. So if you um, prefer to Sharpie, make sure you Sharpie every single thing that you just did in pencil with Sharpie. So I'm just gonna pop these in. I keep it super thin because I want my paint to dry. I want it to look nice. All right, now I'm gonna go over here just real carefully going around the eyes. Um, now Hannah is using watercolors. So I'm very curious to see how hers turns out with the watercolors because I haven't done this piece in watercolor before and I'm just gonna be careful. Now with the white, and especially if you've actually already done the uh, Sharpie, you can actually just go ahead and go over your Sharpie because you'll be able to see it through the white paint. Like you can even see um, some of my pencil marks with the white paint. So it's okay to go over it. I mean, I wouldn't go over the eyes because it's not necessary um, or the mouth or anything. So this area is white. The other area is the Santa Palm. Don't stress out if you go over your pencil lines. That's super important to remember that your pencil is just your guide, okay? Your paintbrush. That does all the, the real important work for you. And I don't stress too much if my Santa fur area or the trim on things um, are a little bit thicker, only because it gives it a little bit more fun texture. All right, so we've got the little Santa trim on the hat and we've got the little palm, we've got his face, has some white on there. I kept it super thin. And now what other areas do we need to do? We're gonna do his buttons. We're going to do his gloves. And if you are using acrylic paint on a canvas, then you are going to um, not worry if you have a little bit of an oops with your paint, if it kind of goes outside or if you dip into the wrong color or you put the wrong color in, it's not a big deal because with canvases, you can actually just use a little um, either water on a paper towel or a wet wipe baby wipe is fine and you can just pull that off. It's a little bit trickier when you're using watercolor paper like I'm doing, so I have to be careful that I don't mess that up. All right, continuing here, keeping it nice and thin. All right, so those are the, um, the key areas. Oh, you guys, you know what I forgot? Look what I forgot to add in here his tail <laughs> definitely add in a little tail and mickey needs a tail so you can just have it coming kind of right through the back with your pencil um there's no like exact or perfect way it needs to be you could even have it coming out this way if you wanted all right so we've got our white down i'm going to push the, put that brush down and i'm going to go into my next oh you know what the other parts you could do is you could do if you are doing the same pattern for your scarf just add a little bit for your scarf in the white areas I know it seems really strange and some people are like, oh my gosh, why why are you putting white paint when the canvas is white or you have white paper? It just, it makes a huge difference by keeping all of this in unison. So you wanna keep all these little shades similar, even the white. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop those in and those other little areas. 
I think that's good for the white. So I'm gonna put that brush down and I'm going to pick another brush and we are just going to go into, how about we go into the red? So I'm just going to dip a little bit and you guys can see, I'm just dipping a little tiny bit of the red in here. I don't use a lot of paint when I'm dipping in because I really feel like less is more. So I'm just going to put a little bit on and then I'm going to brush it out nice and thin. And as I come up to the edges, I just keep it super, super thin. And I just carefully go up to my little edges. I keep it flat. I flatten my brush when I need to. Okay. And you guys can see, sometimes um, I'll choose different reds depending on what I have available in my stash. And sometimes it depends on you know, what type I want to use. Sometimes I'll use a little bit you know, more deeper red. Sometimes I'll use a little bit orangier red. It just sort of depends on what I want. And you can always change up the color. You can change up the style. You can change up the hat or the outfit. He could be wearing a little elf hat if you wanted. How's the uh, watercolor coming, Hannah? Pretty good. I'm good. Yeah. We'll have to pretty. look at yours. Now, Hannah, did you do the Sharpie? I did. Okay, so Hannah did the Sharpie. I did like a thin Sharpie. Oh, now you guys can see that my hand slipped and I got a little bit of red on my, <laughs> right here, a little tiny bit of red on my little Santa trim, but that is okay. We'll fix that up in a little bit. All right, so we're gonna go back in here. Maybe Heidi can get me a wipe. All right, so now from here, we're gonna just pop down over to our um, our shorts because that is important. We wanna get those red shorts, but again, if you're changing it to something else, change it to a different color. Okay, and you can see that I just try to keep it nice and thin. I flatten my brush when I get to those edges, flatten and drag it. Oh, thanks, Anna. Okay, so we're gonna try to get a little bit of this off. Like I said, it's hard to do when you have watercolor paper, but I think it's gonna work. Yep, got it right off. Okay, so continuing on, going into my little shorts. And you guys, again, you can decide if you want to have this sharpied or if you don't. You know, some people like that sharpied line look, framing it, and, and that's really beautiful. You can do that, and you can even paint first if you prefer, and then sharpie later. Or if you have a nice fine brush, you would go in and do your, like a fine little paintbrush. But I don't know, sometimes I don't like it Sharpie. Okay, so just getting into these, I'm just being extra careful. You can see that I go real slow around everything. Going into all my little details. I don't try to rush this part. So, you know, turn on some Christmas music or get some cocoa and just turn your brush as you go into those little areas. And if you need to use two different brushes, use two different brushes. Okay, almost done with the shorts. Now, one of the things about the vanilla background is often I will paint my background first and then let it dry. So with this particular piece, you can do that. You can let, you can paint the entire background super thin, let it dry, and then you can actually um, sketch on with pencil. Once it's completely 100% dry, you can sketch on your piece. That's perfectly fine. You can do that. Um, for this one, I just decided to do the background last, which is also an option. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here going into my little scarf details and I'm going to go into my scarf heading vertically. Okay. Can't wait to see Hannah's. And like I said before, if you need to switch out your brush for a smaller one, please do that because you, there's nothing worse than trying to use a huge brush in little tiny spaces. So often I will use, you know, two different brushes, sometimes even three um, for one area, especially when I'm going around little itty bitty details, faces and going around the background. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here. Okay, 
Last little spot. Okay, Hannah, how's yours coming? Good. Can I see it? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show them. Okay, so you guys can see so far, so good. Let's see, Hannah's gonna show us hers. Oh, that is super pretty. Okay, so here's Hannah's, she's 12, and she's doing watercolor, so you guys can see the difference is, is really neat. She's got that beautiful orangey red color, and she's sharpied hers first, looks great. All right, so now we are going to, we've got the white in, we've got the red in, we're going to add our black. And this is the fun part because this is pretty much when Mickey starts to come to life. So I might use a couple different brushes for these areas, some of the bigger ones, some of the smaller ones. So I'm going to go ahead and dip into my black, be extra careful with this part because the black can get a little crazy sometimes. And I usually like to start either from the top to the bottom or I'll start from the inside to the out. So now I'm going to start with his ear. I'm just gonna be careful. Give those little Santa areas some movement going into the black ear. Okay. And sometimes I'll even turn my piece just to get a better angle. So feel free to do that. Whether you're using paper or a canvas, doesn't matter. Just turn it. What works for you. Okay, there's one. Go to the other side. Same thing. Okay, this guy. Going nice and slow, keeping it thin. He's got some ears now. Okay, and now I'm going to go into this area up here. Be careful when your hand can get into sometimes like your, your wrist or your hand might dip into some of that paint that's not quite dry. Just be careful with that. Did you just do that? <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna come up here and you can see that I turn and curve my brush as I need. Bring it to a nice little point there. You don't want to rush on these parts. You worked super hard getting all of these special little features and details that the last thing you want to do is be like, oh my gosh, okay, I got to quickly get this done. Like if you need to be somewhere, come back to it. If you, you know, if you need to give yourself a break, give yourself a break and then come back to it. Most pieces can't really be done, you know, super fast. So just give yourself that time, take a break if you need to. Okay, there's this. And go to the other side. And again, you can see how I turn it just so that I'm not resting my hand into the paint. Okay. Oh my gosh, Heidi is so great, Heidi is just motioning for me. She's like, uh, you forgot his tongue. Oh my gosh. Yes, I totally forgot his tongue, Heidi. So I need to go back in with my red paint. Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> awesome job. She's like motioning to me. She's like pointing to her tongue, like, hello, his tongue. Okay. And what I might do here is because I do feel pretty confident with a brush, I am just going to go in and you can see that I just outlined the side. Now, a lot of you guys will have done it with Sharpie already, so you won't need to worry about this part. But I'm just gonna pop it in, because I didn't Sharpie, I didn't wanna take the time on the video to do that for you guys, so. All right, we've got this. We've gotta get that poor little Mickey Mouse tongue in. I wonder if I would have noticed. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go down here and I'm just going to do my little arch and go into my eyes. Now, some people, when they Sharpie, they do their entire features in the Sharpie marker and that's okay. Um, personally, I prefer my paintings to be more paint rather than Sharpie just because I don't I want it to look like I've used all the paint rather than it looks like it's done on Sharpie. But you know what? Some people feel more comfortable just using the Sharpie for those little features and that's okay. Okay, I'm going to go into this little guy. 
All right, one eye is done. I sometimes I feel like I hold my breath sometimes when I'm painting the small areas. Anybody else feel that way? <laughs> okay, now we're gonna go into this eye. You can see that I'm going super slow. Don't forget to kind of go around that V. Make sure that you use your eraser with your pencil to get rid of that little V line. Okay. All right. Mm, he's looking so cute. Oops. I forgot to put the red on the holly. I forgot the holly too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Fine. We'll add the holly fairies. <laughs> I thought I had it all covered. Okay. So now we're going to do our nose. And again, I do it nice and slow. I'll show you guys how to add that little, those little white reflections on there. I'm not going to do it until my paint is pretty close or is already dry because what's going to happen if your white paint is with wet red paint, it's going to turn pink. Okay. So now we're going to go into the smile area and I'm just going to curve this here. Go this side. And again, this will probably all be mostly sharpied for all of you. But for those of you that decided to take that risk and just do the paint. Like you? Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to carefully go around that little arch that should be red. <laughs> we'll get there. Carefully go in there. I'm glad I picked a smaller brush for this part. Okay, but he's definitely coming to life. I feel like once you add that black paint, it's all of a sudden like, oh my gosh, there he is. He's so cute. And you guys, you don't have to do the same exact um, like background colors and stuff. My pieces should just be inspiration for you. So if you're like, you know what? I kind of want to do um, a green background or maybe I want to do, you know, an ombre or just white or a totally different color, blue. <laughs> It doesn't matter. You change it to however you like. Okay. So I'm going to carefully go around my little glove. Bump and bump. And his little markings. Okay. I'm going to go into my scarf. He's definitely coming to life. How about you girls? Yeah. Um, still on the red but you're still on the red that's okay especially with the eyes like when you fill in the eye the black eyes yes you definitely have to take your time why are the brush i have so big oh here help yourself i have lots of brushes okay don't forget his little chin he needs mickey needs a chin and his cute little scarf Okay. Don't worry if there's gonna if there's some areas that you feel like are you know not perfectly in unison or maybe they're a little bit thicker than some of the other areas. Seriously, don't stress about that. That's um, that's just part of being an artist. It's part of drawing. It's a part of sketching. It's a part of painting and colored pencils and markers and different paints and different angles. That's just part of the character. All right, we've got this. Okay. I like it. He's super cute so far. So now I'm going to go into the other side, his other arm. Okay. Turn your canvas. Definitely turn your canvas size. Key here. Even if you're using an art easel, just turn it and flip it upside down just to get into some of these little areas that give you a better angle. You'll have more, more control. You can also stand and paint. That sometimes can give you a little bit of relief. Bump. Bump. All right. Now we are going to finish off this little scarf area. We're going to do his top part. And I don't know, is this considered his body or is this considered um. his shirt? 
it's considered his body, you think? Maybe. I know. I was trying to figure that out. I'm Isn't like, Isn't it making us black? I because, guess. Like, does he put on? I don't know. I'm like, does he just wear shorts? This is a good question. So please let us know if you know. All right. So we're going to pop this on. He's definitely adorable. I really like him a lot. Okay, so now, again, this is kind of that part where if you decided, yes, I sharpied or yes, I'm going to paint, you can just sort of give that little framed look or that outline here, here. Okay, same thing with those buttons. And Heidi, did you do... Did you Sharpie or did you just go straight into it like I did? I went straight into it. All right, Heidi did the same thing as me. Okay. Me. And I'm going to do his little legs next. So the benefit of painting your canvas first or your paper, whatever you're using, is that when you get into some of those small areas that you will have to fill in, like going into here, or to go around like his little fringe on his scarf, that type of thing, is that you won't have to worry about going into it with your background color. It, your background will already be down. So you can literally just paint over your background color once it's dry, but that is really important. It has to dry. Okay, next leg. We will not forget his cute little tail this time. And we have to... You guys remind me, I have to go back into his mm. mouth. <laughs> and the holly. And the holly. What's next? I know, I almost did um, presents. That would have been super cute, too. Oh, yeah. All right, get this little guy in. Okay, so you can add the fringe now, or you can wait till after you get that um, background color on. I'm not going to probably take the time to go into the background color um, during this video, only because it's pretty self-explanatory. You literally just paint your background color, whatever background color you choose, which was the vanilla for me. Now from here, I want to kind of go in because I have gone over everything with the black, like outlining all of everything. I'm just going to continue to do that. So I'm going to do his little Santa hat, the trim on it. So I'm just gonna go up here. And again, you can see like the pencil was just a nice little guide for me. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, I have to have it perfect aligned up with what my pencil was. Like I let my paintbrush kind of have a little bit of fun doing the work. And you guys have seen that I have this whole time just turned my piece as I go. You don't have to do that. That's just what makes me feel comfortable and oftentimes what my students do. Okay, so we've got the little palm and we are going to make sure that we don't forget the red so I'm going to go back in with my brush in fact I'm going to take a tiny brush okay like tiny and just get into those little areas so sometimes you have to do that for fixing little spots okay I'm just going to fill in his little tongue okay Okay, now I'm gonna do the holly berries. I'm gonna use that same little brush going in here. I will show you guys how to do your little reflections on everything. Okay, pop those in. There's another one. This little guy. All right, I did three. You could always do more or less. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Now, put that brush down. We pretty much need to do our holly, the actual leaves. And I have a little bit of red on there. That's okay. All right, so we're going to go into our holly leaves. And I just picked a really pretty green for this one. You can do a lighter green or a darker green. It doesn't really matter have a little bit of green on my brush and I'm going to go right into my points first 
All right, now I'm going to fill this guy in. Carefully go around your berry leaves. I'm sorry, your berries into your leaves. Fill this guy in. Okay. Next, over here. One. Okay. Filling in this. Two out of three. And remember, you could do like a few of these little clusters on the page if you want it. Like you could do more than just this one set. You could do them in each corner or you could do one in the bottom corner or, um, you know, one in each top corner. Okay, turn this side to this one. Okay. Going into this guy. This is the last one. All right, Heidi, did I miss anything? Um, let me oh, see. I know what we need to do. The reflections. reflections. Yes. Okay. Now, ideally, you would want to wait until your piece is completely dry to do this, but we're just going to do it and just hope for the best. <laughs> All right. So you can see, we're going to zoom out a little bit. There's two Mickeys. They look super similar to each other. You don't have to do this part, but I'm going to do it just for fun. Now, you can see here's the difference. If you were to not use the vanilla. Okay. So it's just a little bit more antiqued than if you were just keeping it plain white. You can do that. It's totally fine. I just wanted it to be a little bit more antiqued, which is why I use the vanilla shade. Okay. So from here, this is when you would take some brushes and you would dip into your vanilla and you would start to either carefully go around all of your details. And I'm not going to do that right now to waste time because that's pretty self-explanatory, but I would take my vanilla and I would fill in everything else or like I said, you could do the vanilla first on your plain canvas, let it dry for several hours, and then go back in and sketch everything with your pencil and then paint. That's fine too. Or if you want to keep it white, that's great also. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we are going to do a little bit of the highlighting or um, kind of that reflection area. So you can see on certain areas of my sample piece here, you can see there's a little bit of reflection here, a little bit on the ears, just all in this area. That's where the light would hit. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to dip into the pink just a little bit, like not very much at all. You can see that it's just hardly any on there. And I'm just going to start to go into some of the areas. So I'll start with just a little soft bit around the corner here. I'll do a tiny bit up here on his ear. A little bit on the curving. I'm not doing huge stripes or glops anywhere. I'm just keeping it very light, like almost like I have nothing on there. I'll do a little bit on the side here, maybe tiny bit on the eyes, a little bit here, tiny bit over here. You can do it on the top of the nose a little bit, like where the light would be hitting. Okay, you could do the side of the arm, and you don't even have to do as much, or you could do more. It's kind of your preference. Um, you can hit like on the little bit of the shorts. You can see I have hardly any pressure on my brush. It is so light, just keeping it very light. It's, I want it to be subtle. I don't want it to be like, oh, wow, look at those big white globs on, on his shorts. <laughs> I don't want that. So I'm just going to do very subtle, keeping it like so. Okay, so those are the areas that I did. Um, I don't think I did any other areas. I think that's good. We got the tongue in, so that's good too. You do the reflections on the berries. Oh, yes. Oh, Heidi is so good. So I did the little bit of reflection on the berries. So I just did a little bit. Again, you can see I didn't even dip into my brush. I just add a little bit of soft little reflections. Okay. Just very subtle. I think they look awesome. I'm excited. I love them both. Um, I hope that you guys have fun creating this classic piece that you can bring out every year. Oh, we have to see what the children did. So this is an adult doing this piece and this is a child. So this is a seven-year-old creating hers. I love him. He is just the cutest. So that's seven years old, Heidi. And this one is Hannah and she is 12 years old. And look how amazing. And that's all done with me right now, just like you guys are doing.
So I hope you guys have happy holidays and you enjoy your Mickey Mouse and you are able to learn this and do this over and over so you can make greeting cards and you can make bookmarks and show other people how to do this as well. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.